Washington, D.C. You can probably see the Capitol building over there. The Washington Monument is over in that direction. This is Michael. We are here and we're going to talk about the situation in the U.S. So, if you haven't been to Washington, D.C., great city, actually, uh, at least in the summer. It's my first time here. It is the end of August. They tell me it gets quite hot, but it's been fairly mild, I would say, while we're here. And it's a great city. It's clean. There's lots to do, tons of museums. It's super interesting to explore the history here. They've got a really nice architecture, and so they have a bit of a homeless problem. Not, not so good in that respect, but overall, one of the best U.S. cities, I would say, at least my experience of it. So really, really pleased to be here. Now, interesting thing that I was kind of noticing as we were going around, you know, I mean, it's, I guess, self-evident for anyone who studied the history, but I hadn't necessarily paid attention to it. There's a trend in the U.S. right now that's very kind of socialist, right? Or they would call it social democrat, this sort of thing. Uh, Bernie Sanders and people like that. Lots of pressure to raise taxes on the rich. Lots of talk about income inequality. And it's interesting that historically, what caused the formation of the U.S.? It was the American Revolution started because of taxes, right? So we're going to talk about taxes today. The U.S. tax system is obviously affects tons and tons of people uh, and it does that because you know the population is large the GDP is the largest in the world quite by far GDP per capita is quite high and especially there's a really unique tax system here so what is unique about it what is unique is there is citizenship based taxation now what does that mean that means that normally you're taxed on your residency now here they determine residency in part by citizenship meaning so long as you're a citizen it doesn't matter where you live doesn't matter what other citizenships you have, you're required to file a U.S. tax return and comply with U.S. tax laws. Now, that doesn't intrinsically mean you'll have to pay something. Uh, if you live outside of the country for a certain amount of time, you can uh, qualify for what's called the foreign earned income exclusion, which is going to you know, potentially save you. Basically, you get a $100,000 a year exemption, approximately. It's inflation adjusted, things like this. Uh, so you've got that, which is kind of nice for people who want to be kind of digital nomads, this sort of thing. That's useful. Now, when it comes to companies, uh, they just had the big tax reform here in the U.S. Uh, at the end, uh, it was about two years ago. So that was the Trump tax, whatever they called it. Anyway, the Trump tax reforms, and they adjusted a bunch of things. So they lowered the corporate tax rate to make it competitive before it was about 40%, which is hugely, and that's the federal one, then you had to state on top of that. Uh, now they brought it down to 21%. However, they did eliminate some of the exemptions, so that kind of makes it not exactly as big a drop as you might say, but still pretty reasonable. Uh, very competitive anyway with the global environment. But they made some big changes, and that big change in particular was the U.S. has something called subpart F of the U.S. tax system. It's their controlled foreign companies rules. If you want to learn about that, you can watch our videos on uh, controlled foreign companies and tax regimes, etc. Well, what did they add here? They added something called the guilty tax. So it used to be the you could form a foreign company as an American and you could more or less treat it as a giant uh, 401k. That's like a defer, tax deferral structure, right? Uh, that's what Apple and Google and Facebook and Amazon and all these guys have done for quite a few years now. But some, in particular, a few things changed in the last few years. So what has changed? Well, first of all, uh, we'll start by backing up quickly to corporate tax here is based on uh, the location of registration, not on management control. So if you look at what Apple was doing for a lot of years, they had uh, set up in Ireland, people would say, oh, you know, it's Ireland, Ireland's low tax. That's not true. What they had was they had an Irish registered company that was managed from California, and the U.S. rules said, hey, if it's not registered in the U.S., it's not a U.S. company. So they said, hey, it's not a U.S. company. The Irish rules said if it's not managed in Ireland, it's not an Irish company. So they said, hey, it's not an Irish company. They declared no tax residency anywhere, and they paid no tax, more or less, anywhere for quite a few years, to the tune of tens of billions of dollars, right? Which is, it was great tax savings for them. Uh, to try and combat that in their CFC rules, they had something called subpart F, but there was a lot of holes in it, okay? So you could basically keep your money overseas. They changed that now with this guilty tax. Under the, they did two things. They brought in a participation exemption. Again, if you under, don't understand participation exemption, we have a video on that, you can check it out. Uh, so it's kind of a partial participation exemption, helps you to potentially bring money back to a parent company, tax-free or more or less tax-free. However, it has a big disadvantage in that it's not, it's, it's not super easy to qualify for the same way that some others were. The guilty tax, the global uh, 
intangible low tax income stands for. Uh, doesn't isn't just intangible and isn't just low tax. More or less, in most cases, going to subject a controlled foreign company to that tax. Okay, so that means that you can't just set up a company in Puerto Rico and live in the U.S. and pay four percent tax and leave the money there. You can't just have a company in BVI and leave the money there. Most of the time, unless you have a lot of capital assets involved in the production of your income, they're going to tax you. You get some tax savings. There's some nuance you can play around with there. And so it is possible, but more or less it's been eliminated. So what is the situation for Americans? Well, for Americans, you have, I would say, three different good strategies today. One is you can go and you can relocate to Puerto Rico. By far, this is like the huge hole for Americans, all right? If you live in Puerto Rico, they have their own rules. You can basically have a company there that pays four-ish percent tax under certain circumstances. You have to qualify for it, it's not just every company. And then you can receive dividend income for free. It's great for people who are doing crypto, things like this, they can save a ton of money. Number two, you can use some sort of a uh, trust structure. So there's something called a foreign non-grantor trust that can potentially be used as US tax rules. It's not everybody uses their language around trust. So anyway, can potentially be used uh, to help you out. Uh, although there's something called throwback tax, you should reach out to us and we'll go through with you whether it's applicable to you. The third is there are some really interesting domestic tax structures. Okay, so if you have enough scale, you can potentially get tax neutral structures. Uh, they cost a fair bit to set up and they cost a fair bit to maintain, but it's potentially really good. There, you can add along with things like capital insurance rules, etc. So the US has kind of changed the game so that unless you're in a certain window, uh, you're not going to take advantage of zero tax anymore. But there's still a lot of things that can be done. And so if you're interested in it, reach out to us. We're happy to help you. And we will go through whether it applies to you, what can be done, what can't be done. And the good news is that if you have a domestic structure, then you don't have to worry about all the foreign compliance. You don't have to worry about the hassles that go along with, uh, you know, do you have the substance? Is the income there? Is the income in the US? The income's clearly in the US. And that's okay it still meets these rules. So anyway, that's a kind of unique situation called an ASC structure. And so it might apply to you, it might not. Puerto Rico might or might not. Foreign earned income exclusion might or might not. But that's gonna give you a basic idea. And if you've got questions, you wanna save money and you're in the US, reach out to us. We'll look forward to talking to you guys on the next video.